Uh, biology peeps. Um, oh, look at that spider plant. That's something else. Oh my goodness. All right. Um, hey, I just want to give you a little, a little uh, bump here, a little tip. Help us get through uh, part of the next section. That's right. And uh, that's, you know, we got a few pages to take care of today as we are exploring sexual reproduction with flowers, with flowers, right? Flowering plants, whatever. And hopefully this ties in pretty well with, uh, with your projects right now. Um, we, uh, we're having you, you know, observe some of these types of things. And if your flower, uh, your plant has flowered at this point, You've been picking out if it's complete or incomplete or any of those kinds of details that we're going to have in our in our book today. So uh, pages 332 to 335, you're going to read about the formation of gametes. Uh, you've probably done this bunches of times in your science classes up to this point, but you're going to kind of get the uh, the biology version of this thing. But yeah. You're going to be looking at if your tree makes catkins or incomplete flowers or uh, if it's missing any of the parts here of the of the flower that's listed on page 332. Uh, in the email, it has a couple of things there for you that you need to open right away and print off so that you have them with you as you're watching the video. There's a couple of, of um, I guess, scan documents that I... I I took out some of the details that you have to fill in. I'm going to show you the pictures on today's thing. Okay. So the last time that uh, that I sent a video, we were looking at the top part of this handout here with the vegetative asexual reproduction in flowering plants and the anthophytes. And we had the spider plant and we had strawberries and potatoes and all those kinds of things. Um, stolons, rhizomes, bulbs, corms, tubers. I mentioned garlic or uh, onions, things like that that uh, can reproduce asexually. Or artificially, you can take stem cuttings like with the African violet. You can put it on the Petri dish and you can get the little, the little uh, plantlets that grow along the edge of the, uh, of the leaf. Uh, but today we're, we're gonna talk about the normal way that, that we think of this, that is the majority of the reproduction in, um, in the plants, in the flowering plants is with flowers and then fruits and the seeds. So all those three go together. Um, the flowers are there to uh, attract bugs. And that's one of the main jobs. They've got the male and female parts, which will go through sexual reproduction. We'll go down into the middle of that, of that, um, I guess of the female part, the uh, ovary, the ovules, They'll get uh, fertilized and then you get seeds that produce and then a fruit that, that forms around it. Okay, so if you're, um, if you're looking at the book, you've got something that's kind of like this, all these various flower parts. They've got a misspelling here. This should be pedicel, C-E-L. Then receptacle, sepals, which are oftentimes the things that cover the bud as it's forming before it opens up. You think more like the the bud coverings on a rose, and then it's kind of just sitting down there underneath the flower when it's the flower is open. And then the petals. Next ring, they're collectively called the corolla. So you got the calyx and the corolla, and the sepals and the petals kind of go together are, are called the uh, perianth. Peri goes around, anth, the flower, should make sense. The real flowering parts would be the uh, the reproductive parts. That's the most important parts. We've got the male parts, which is the stamen, it's uh, both uh, the filament and the anther. Okay, so you got multiple uh, filaments. That's the long part here, and then the you've got the uh, the anther, which is the part that has the uh, the pollen on it. Uh, the girl parts is in the middle. We've get the uh, the stigma, the stigma, which means it's like a well, a stigma is like a, a sign or an imprint, okay? And that would be at the top. And they don't show a very good picture of that. There's a better picture in your book. Uh, then the style, which all ladies have, that's the skinny part of, uh, of the structure. And then down here, you got the ovary and the ovules, the like baby seed sections. So you're going to check that out in your book. 
uh, and on the handout that I'm going to show you here in just a second. Kinds of flowers, again, we want to match this up with what you're doing in your projects. Are they complete? Do they have sepals, petals, and at least one stamen and one pistil? If it has all four of those parts, it's called a complete, complete flower. It could be incomplete where it's lacking one of those things like the eucalyptus or the dogwood. Um, but many of the flowers that you guys are dealing with have all the parts. Um, and then you've got some plants that have separate male and female flowers. Um, male flowers, well, I mean, you can have that or you could have them on the same one. And, and um, male flowers lacking the female parts, the pistil. And female flowers lacking the stamen. So you actually get like two different kinds of flowers. And the, probably the wind has to go and uh, get that pollen. Uh, get the pollen on, this, on the stamen to the pistil on the female flower. All right, I'm going to switch over to the stern stuff. So hopefully by now you've printed off those pages with the blanks in it. And I'm going to do uh, page 22 first. And uh, if you need, I guess I can make this a little bit bigger for you. There we go. So you want to label the missing parts there. If you have to, just hit pause right now and then fill in your sheet. But you should say these words out loud as you're filling them in. We got these three parts, the female parts, stigma style and ovary. There's the tip where the, the pollen will touch and they'll grow a pollen tube down the style into the ovule. In the ovary you got the male parts over here the stay men stay men male parts you've got the the filaments and the anthers which has the pollen on it you got the petals or the corolla all of the petals together make the corolla it's not a toyota and then over here you got the sepals the next layer down the coverings of the bud uh, they all together all the sepals equal the calyx Underneath that, you got the receptacle, the part that's holding the flower. Uh, that might be actually above where the, the petals are, or it might be below. It depends on your particular flower. You might want to check out yours and see if the receptacle is above or below um, your uh, corolla. And then down at the, at the bottom, the stem, the, the top part of the stem that's, that's a little bit swelled and goes into the receptacle is called the peduncle or the pedicel. So again, uh, hit pause, fill those out. On I go to uh, to the next two pages. So we also see that um, that the seeds on these things that come in lots of different forms. We just had a bunch of things that were swirling around, and family thought it was petals from an almond almond blossoms. I said, no, those are seeds, and um, picked them up this morning, and we're like, yep, those are little seeds that were falling off of a tree. I think it was like a chestnut or something. I don't know. But dandelions have a little seed at the bottom and then an umbrella up here. Maples, the ones that do the whole um, spinny thing, those are samaras or keys. When they pop off, they've got the seed down here and the heavy part in the wing that makes it, it spin and, and gets uh, distributed by the wind. Poppies have a capsule and uh, they will uh, shake and their little seeds will go all over the place. You can have orchids which make a big pod like that. Got cottonwoods, which are super duper messy. You got all these fibers that get caught in the wind, but the seeds are in there. Um, yeah, if you've ever been on the dairy, they got big piles of cotton seed uh, that the cows like. It's really good and nutritious. And tumbleweeds. Tumbleweeds got seeds on them too. Lots of different ways that seeds and fruits get dispersed by the wind. Used to hop jump these for fun out in the road when we lived in the desert. Okay, the last two pages here is what you've got to um, to label. I'm going to zoom back in this way a little bit. Looks like i got a visitor here. Hey, Zach just visited me. That was fun. Oh, now he's gone. So it's just me again. I'm lonely. Okay, um, here's the top part of this page. You can see we're starting with, hey, what does this look like, huh? You guys know what that probably is? Yeah, maybe. So again, if you need to just hit pause and you fill in the blanks there, this is the two end side of things. That's what this page is. And then I'm going to scroll down here in about five, 
four, three, two, one. Get the bottom part of the picture, the life cycle, the typical flowering plant. Ooh, we even get a 3N endosperm in here for a, a moment. Stacked up on this stuff. Okay, so again, hit pause. Fill it in. Here comes the next page, page 73. This is the end side of things. You got meiosis that's occurred, and now you're like megaspores, three megaspores to generate. You get one, one megaspore. We're also tracing male and female parts here. Pollen grains versus the one seed that's going to get germinated. Eventually, it'll get fertilized first. Anyway, hit pause. Get the details. Fill that stuff in. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees and the moon up above. Um, been watching some hummingbirds at our house doing uh, some drinking up the nectar and and uh, giving the cats what for. Kind of fun watching all that happen. And you see bees going around just drunk with nectar and with all kinds of pollen stuck to their legs. It's pretty fun. Um, yeah, we got uh, one more page here with lots of different kinds of um, seeds and how they get dispersed. Mistletoes make berries. Uh, animals might eat that and then poop out the seeds. It's just said poop. Uh, cockleburrs and bed straw fruit. Uh, my favorite, the uh, clover, making those little twisty things that get stuck in your socks. Uh, you got, um, could get stuck to the hooves of animals like the unicorn plant, etc. So lots of different ways. I guess we'll look at seeds. Um, we'll look at seeds in the next episode. So maybe I should just cut this one off and send the information to you. Okay, so we got these three pages that you're supposed to label. Not that one, this one. And uh, and read those, what, 332 to 335 in your book. Okay, we'll talk to you later, bye.